Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our first lesson on the second topic of Form 4 which is called Uniform Circular Motion. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that self-doubt is the greatest enemy of human potential. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So before we discuss Uniform Circular Motion, remember in Form 3, uh, Topic 1, Lesson 1, which was called Linear Motion, we did discuss the three types of motions. We talked of the linear motion, which was also called translational motion, which we discussed under the same chapter. You can just refer linear motion lesson one. We did discuss the three types of motion. So the second type of motion was called oscillatory motion, which is also called vibrational motion. So we discussed that type of motion under uh, when we were looking at the pendulum. We also discussed the oscillatory or vibrational motion in a certain uh, from two work topic which was called waves one so you can just refer waves one from this particular channel we actually discussed uh, more about the oscillatory motion so in this chapter we'll be looking at the third type of motion which is called circular motion which is also called rotational motion so when we talk of uniform circular motion uniform simply means that the speed of the motion has to be constant or it has to be uniform then circular motion is simply motion of a body in a circular path. For example, when you have maybe a car going around a circular bend. So a body is said to be moving with uniform circular motion if it is moving in a circular path and with a constant speed. So constant speed means that the speed does not change with time or that uh, the speed remains uh, uniform or the same throughout that particular motion. So let's look at a few terms. Um, which will help us understand more about uniform circular motion. So the first term is called the angular displacement, which is denoted by theta. Now consider a body moving from point A up to point B, of course, moving in a circular path. So the distance from A up to point B is simply called the arc length. So the arc length from point A up to point B, remember, the, uh, consider this particular arc, which is subtending an angle theta at the center O of this particular circle. Then the radius of the circle, of course, is R. So the arc AB represents the distance S. So you can see the arc from point A up to point B is representing our distance S, while the angle subtended by the arc AB is called the angular displacement, which is actually our angle theta. Therefore, if you're asked to define angular displacement, you simply say that it is the angle subtended by an arc at the center of a circle, uh, when a body, of course, is moving in a circular path. The angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc. That is what we are calling the angular displacement, and we denote it by theta. So in uniform circular motion, angles are usually measured in radians. So this is how we represent an angle in radian. So remember, angles can be measured in degrees, which is, um, that is in degrees, or they can also be measured in radian. So this is, this one simply means that theta to the power of c simply means that the angle theta is actually in radians. Then the angle theta uh, in radians is always given by the arc length AB divided by the radius of that particular circle. So if you want to find this angle theta, we'll simply take the arc length, which is the distance AB, which is denoted by S, then we divide by the radius of that particular circle, which is the distance OB, which is also equal to the distance OA. Therefore, the arc length, that is the angle theta in radians, which is simply the angular displacement, is given by the arc length AB, which is S, then divided by the radius of the circle OB, which is actually the distance R. Therefore, if I pick the angle theta and S and R, I'll simply get theta being equal to S over R. So this one simply means that the angular displacement can be given by the arc length divided by the radius of the circle. So this is the formula that we use uh, to calculate the angular displacement. Then when an arc length is equal to the radius of the circle. So if this distance AB, suppose the distance AB, which is equals to S, is equal to the radius of the circle, which is actually R, then in that particular case, our formula, which is theta is equals S over R, will simply be equal to one radian. Because remember, theta is simply the angle in radian. So when S is equals to R, so suppose maybe uh, the distance AB is actually maybe uh, four centimeters and also the radius of the circle is four centimeters then in that case the formula theta is equals s over r will simply be four centimeters divided by four centimeters which would just give us one and because we say that theta represents the angle in radians it simply means that 
when the arc length, that is when the distance s is equal to r, or when the arc length is equal to the radius of the circle, then the angle subtended at the center will always be equal to one radian, which is also called a radian. So a radian simply means an angle a theta of one radian. Therefore, from this particular relationship, we can define a radian. That a radian will always be the angle subtended at the center of the circle by an arc length equal to the radius of the circle. So you can see when S is equal to R, if you divide, if you find this quotient, you will find your theta being equal to 1 or simply a radian. Therefore, a radian is defined as the angle subtended at the center of the circle by a, an arc length equal to the radius of the circle. Then the angle theta, uh, which is simply the angular displacement, subtended by the circumference at the center of the circle of radius r in radians is given by this formula. So from the formula, uh, angular displacement s is equal to s over r. So from the, that is the angle theta in radians, which is simply the angular displacement is equal to the arc length. So if we are talking of the circumference of the circle, remember circumference simply means that the body is moving from point A, then it is moving back to the same same point A. That is when you form one complete oscillation. That is what we mean by the circumference. So remember, if you move from point A back to point A, you have covered a distance which is equal to the circumference of that particular circle. Therefore, the arc length or the distance covered will simply be the circumference of the circle, then divided by, of course, the radius of the circle, courtesy of this particular formula. Therefore, the angle theta in radians is equal to the circumference divided by the radius. So that is for one complete oscillation. If you make one complete oscillation, the total displacement or the total distance covered will simply be the circumference of the circle, then of course divided by the radius of the circle. Now we know that the circumference of a circle is given by either uh, pi d or which is the same as 2 pi r, therefore circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, then divided by the radius which is r. Of course the radius and radius will simply cancel out so that we remain with uh, the angle. Uh, subtended at the center being equal to 2 pi radians. Now remember 2 pi radians represents the angle from point A uh, back to point A, which is simply the angle at a point, the angle at a point, because we are talking of one complete rotation or one complete uh, revolution. Therefore, for the circumference or for one complete uh, revolution or for one complete rotation, the angle theta in radians will be covered, will simply be equal to 2 pi radians. So the angle subtended here will be 2 pi radians for one complete uh, oscillation. But we know that uh, to make one complete rotation, you, are sim you have simply covered 360 degrees. Or similarly, we can also say that angles at a point uh, are simply equal to 360 degrees, or they sum up to 360 degrees. Therefore, because we have found that the angle in radians will be called 2 pi radians, and that is 2 pi radians for one complete rotation, and similarly, the angle uh, of a circle, or the angle in one complete rotation in degrees is equal to 360 degrees, we can therefore use this relationship to see, uh, to find a relationship between conversion of the angles in radians and in degrees Celsius. So if I divide both sides by 2 pi, I'll simply have one radian being equal to 360 divided by 2 pi, of course, in radians. Then uh, 2 divides into 360. So 360 divided by 2, you'll simply get 180. Therefore, one radian is equal to 180 over pi degrees, which can be approximated as, remember, you, if I take pi as 3.142, I'll simply have 180 degrees divided by 3.142. So I'll simply get a 57 point to nine degrees, which is correct to four significant figures. Therefore, this is the relationship that we use to convert angles from degree Celsius to radian and vice versa. So one radian is equal to 180 over pi degrees. Therefore, you can do any conversion if an angle is in degree Celsius or in radian and vice versa. Next. Our next term is called angular velocity, denoted by twisted W, which is simply read as omega. Remember, just in the same way that we have A, B, C, D up to Z in our alphabet, the Greek also have their alphabet, which starts from alpha up to the omega. So W in this case will simply denote the angular velocity. So angular velocity is defined as the rate of change of angular displacement with time. So whenever we talk of a rate, then it means we are dividing something by time. Therefore, uh, angular velocity will simply be given by 
the change in angular displacement divided by the change in time so angular velocity is equals to change in angular displacement divided by the change in time now remember from a previous slide we have just said that angular that is the angular displacement is noted by theta and of course time is actually t therefore the angular velocity which is omega will be equal to the change in displacement that is change in theta divided by the change in time so from this particular definition because we know that um, the unit for angular displacement is simply the radian then of course the unit for time is actually seconds therefore it means that the units for angular velocity will simply be radians per second because we are taking angular displacement which is in radians then we, we are dividing by time which is always in seconds therefore the angular velocity is usually measured in radians per second which is can be denoted as rad per second or simply rad second power negative one where negative one simply means that we are taking radian then we are dividing by the second then uh, dividing both side of the um, equation of displacement which was theta displacement theta is equal to s over r if i divide that equation on both side by t i'll simply end up having theta divided by t is equal to s uh, t multiplied by r or r times t so if I divide both sides of this equation by t, I'll simply have theta over t being equal to s over rt. So I'm doing this so that I can derive other equations related to, uh, that is relating the angular velocity and of course theta and also the linear velocity. So dividing both sides of this equation by t, I'll have theta over t being equal to s over rt. Then if I take a small change on both sides of this equation, I'll simply have delta theta over delta t that is delta theta over delta t being equal to the change in um, s divided by r multiplied by the change in time but we know that the change in displacement of a change in time that is simply the definition for angular velocity so because change in uh, displacement of a change in time is the angular velocity therefore i can substitute it in this particular term here so delta theta over delta t that is uh, omega therefore I'll see this equation will disintegrate into omega being equal to delta s over r delta t so omega is equal to delta s over r delta t but because we know that so this side can also be separated to be uh, rewritten as so this this side is just the same as saying one multiplied by r multiplied by delta s over delta t so i'm separating delta s over delta t so that we can equate it to something else so because we know that change in displacement of a change in um, time that is simply the definition for linear velocity or simply uh, the velocity so it simply means that delta s over delta t that is simply velocity remember velocity is change in displacement over change in time therefore if you just take where s is simply the distance covered or simply the displacement in this case therefore change in displacement over change in time that is the definition for velocity and in this case we call it the linear velocity or velocity in a straight line which is just the same as the speed so remember the only difference between speed and velocity is actually the aspect of direction so if we talk of velocity being linear that is in a specific direction then in that case velocity will just be the same as the speed therefore change in distance over change in time will give you the linear velocity or which is simply the definition for speed Therefore, omega will be equal to 1 over r multiplied by the linear velocity. That is change in displacement over change in time. Therefore, omega will be equal to 1 over r multiplied by v. Of course, where v is the linear velocity or simply the speed in meters per second. Therefore, if I multiply 1 over r multiplied by v, of course, 1 times v, I'll just get v. Therefore, omega will be equal to v over r. So this is another formula that we can use to find the omega or the angular velocity which is v over r that is linear velocity over r if i make v or linear velocity subject of the formula i'll simply multiply both sides by r so that i have linear velocity being equal to the radius multiplied by the angular velocity which is denoted by the omega so any object in a circular motion has both linear velocity in meters per second and the angular velocity which is always in radians per second as shown in this particular circle so for example this is a body which is uh, moving around a circular path in the anti-clockwise direction so the linear velocity will always act along the tangent and remember the angle between the tangent and the radius of the circle is always 90 degrees and of course this would represent the direction of the angular 
velocity. So a body uh, moving in a circular motion has both linear velocity and the angular velocity. So in one complete revolution or in one complete rotation, that is simply one complete cycle, the angle covered theta will simply be equal to 360 degrees. Remember angles at a point will always add up to 360 degrees. Therefore, uh, the angular displacement theta will simply be equal to 360 degrees, which is equal to the 2 pi radians. Then of course, also for one complete rotation, the time taken to make one complete uh, revolution or rotation or oscillation, that is the definition for period. Therefore, for one complete uh, revolution or uh, oscillation, the time taken is equal to the period, which is always noted by capital T, as we said under uh, waves one, which was a chapter that we covered in form two. You can just review from this particular uh, lesson. We said that period is noted by capital T. Therefore, the formula for angular velocity, which is omega, which was equal to theta over t from up here, will simply become the angle covered theta. It's simply 2 pi, of course, in radians. Then the time taken to make one complete revolution is actually the period, which is t. So for one complete revolution, omega will be equal to theta, which is equal to 2 pi or 360 degrees, then divided by the time taken to make one complete uh, revolution. That is simply the period t. Therefore, another formula for finding the angular velocity is simply angular velocity uh, is given by 2 pi over the period uh, taken. Then from this particular formula, we can as well separate it. So this one is just the same as saying omega is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the reciprocal of the period. Then we know that under waves 1, you can just re review waves 1 from this particular channel. We actually covered it under form 2 work. We also covered waves 2 under form 3 work. So just review, you'll actually uh, see those particular lessons. So from waves 1, we also said that frequency can be given by the reciprocal of the period. Therefore, if I substitute a frequency where I have the reciprocal of period, so this formula can as well be written as omega is equals to 2 pi f. So these are the formulas that we can use to find the omega. Of course, uh, that is the, the angular velocity, the linear velocity, and the radius, and also the period, and also the frequency of a certain motion. Next, we look at an example which reads that a turntable rotates at a rate of 45 revolutions per minute. What is the angular velocity in radians per second? So we know that angular velocity can be given by 2 pi f or 2 pi over the period. So because we are told that a turntable it is rotating at a rate of 45 revolutions per minute and this formula needs frequency, we know that frequency is simply the number of revolutions made in one second. That is, we defined that under waves 1. You can just review it. It was, I think, uh, one of the chapters in form 2. You can just review it from this particular uh, channel. We actually covered it. So 45 revolutions are made in one minute. And we know that the number of revolutions made in a second, that is the definition for frequency. So if 45 revolutions is equal to one minute, and we know that one minute simply means 60 seconds, therefore 45 revolutions are made in 60 seconds. So what about in one second? So this will be one second over 60 seconds multiplied by 45 revolutions, which gives us 0 0.75 revolutions. So these are the number of revolutions made in one second, and that is the definition for frequency. Therefore, frequency is equal to 0 0.75 hertz or per second, because frequency is simply the number of revolutions made only in one second. So the frequency is 0 0.75. Therefore, our angular velocity, which is 2 pi f, will simply be given by uh, the 2, then multiplied by pi. Pi, we use 3.142, then multiplied by the frequency, which is 0 0.75. So the angular velocity will simply be 4.713. This is correct to four significant figures in radians per second. Then question 2 reads that, question 2a, we are told that a model car moves around a circular track of radius 0 0.4 centimeters at two revolutions per second. Remember the number of revolutions made in a second, that is the definition for frequency. Then remember the time taken to make one revolution, that is the definition for the period. So because you are told that two revolutions are made in one second, that simply means this is the frequency of this particular uh, model car. So part A, they are asking us to find the period. 
So remember, we know the relationship between period and frequency. That is from both waves one and waves two. Remember, waves one we covered under uh, that is form two work. You can just review from this particular lesson. So uh, we are told that two revolutions are made in one second. So that is the definition for frequency. The number of revolutions made in a second. Therefore, frequency is simply equal to two has. So because Roman one, they want us to find period. And we know that period is equal to the reciprocal of frequency that is from waves one. So period will simply be equal to one over the frequency and our frequency is actually two. So period is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. Then Roman two, they want us to find the angular velocity. So once we have the period, we know the relationship between period and uh, uh, that is the angular velocity. So I've just said from a previous slide that uh, omega, which is the uh, angular velocity can be given by 2 pi over the period, which can also be given by 2 pi f. Therefore, in this case, there are two ways of tackling this. So if I use the period, omega is equals 2 pi over the period. So pi is 3.142 over period is 0 0.5. So 2 multiplied by 3.142 divided by 0 0.5, you'll simply obtain 12.57 radian per second. Similarly, you can also use the formula involving the frequency, whereby we said that angular velocity can be given by 2 pi f, where f is the frequency of the wave. So remember the frequency is 2 hertz, so this will be equal to 2 multiplied by the pi, which is 3.142, times the frequency, which is 2 hertz. So again, this will give us 12.57 radians per second. So you can use the first formula or the second formula, you realize that the answers will just be the same. But of course, in an exam situation, you, didn't, you don't need to show us the two of them. You just choose one that will be easier for you. Then Roman 2, they want us to, that is Roman 3, they want us to find the, the speed. So remember, speed simply means the linear velocity. Speed and linear velocity are just the same because when you talk of linear velocity, you are simply talking of velocity in a specific direction. Once you have normalized the aspect of direction, in that case, it means the velocity and the speed will just be one and the same thing. Because remember, the only difference is that velocity is a vector quantity, but speed is a scalar quantity. So once you eliminate the aspect of direction by making the velocity to be linear, then in that case, the velocity and the speed will just be the same. So we have derived this formula and said that speed or linear velocity can be given by the radius multiplied by the that is the angular velocity. Therefore, the speed, because you already have the angular velocity, which is 12.57 radians per second, therefore the linear speed or the linear velocity will be given by the radius. We are told that it has a radius of 0 0.4 meters. So 0 0.4 multiplied by the angular uh, velocity, which is 12.57 radians per second. So the speed or the linear velocity will be equal to 0 0.4 times 12.57 to four significant figures, we'll get 5.028, of course, in meters per second. Then part B, we are told to find the angular velocity and the frequency of motion of the car if it moves with a uniform speed of two meters per second. So we are given the uh, linear velocity, which is actually V, which is simply two meters per second. We are also given the radius of the circle, which is 0 0.2 uh, meters. Then they want us to find the angular velocity. So we have also showed that angular velocity can be given by V over R, that is the linear uh, velocity or uniform speed divided by the radius of the circle. So velocity or the uniform speed is 2 meters per second divided by the radius is 0 0.4, which will simply be equal to 2 divided by 0 0.2. Uh, remember 0 0.2 is the radius of the circle, so 2 divided by 0 0.2, you just get 10 radians per second. Then they also want us to find the frequency. Once we have the um, omega or the linear, that is once we have the angular velocity, we know the relationship between angular velocity and frequency. So we know that angular velocity can be given by 2 pi f. Therefore, if I make frequency subject of the formula, I'll simply divide both sides by 2 pi. Therefore, frequency will be equal to omega over 2 pi or the angular velocity over 2 pi, which is equals to angular velocity. We have already computed it as 10 radians per second divided by 2 times pi. Pi is 3.142. So to four significant figures, this would give me 1.591 hertz. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to gauge the understanding of the concepts that we have just learned. If you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. 
The quote of the day stated that self-doubt is the greatest enemy of human potential. So the quote is warning us against doubting our own abilities. Remember that most people in the world never attain the greatest limits of their potential because they doubt how far they can reach. I'm here to encourage you to pursue your dreams without the fear of failure or the fear of what will other people say. And lastly, remember that it is not the lack of ability, but the lack of confidence that prevents us from achieving what we really want. Sometimes it is doable, but self-doubt makes it impossible. Therefore, the best medicine of self-doubt is taking action. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.